ever pondered upon what lies at the edge of the universe? This question has been a source of intrigue and wonderment, a cosmic conundrum that has puzzled humanity for centuries. When we think of an edge, we often relate it to the edge of a map or the boundary of a globe. But when we're talking about the universe, the concept of an edge takes on a whole new meaning. You see, space isn't like a map. It's not flat or finite. It's not something you can fold up and tuck away in a drawer. Instead, space is more like the surface of a balloon. It's curved and boundless. When you travel in a straight line in space, you aren't heading towards a border or an end point. Instead, you're embarking on a journey that will eventually loop back on itself. In essence, the universe doesn't have an edge in the same way a coin or a planet does. The universe isn't a flat disk floating in some larger, infinite expanse. It's not a bubble suspended in an endless void. It's not a finite object with a clearly defined border. Instead, the universe is all there is. It's everything. And within this everything, space is constantly expanding, stretching out in all directions. So what does this mean for the concept of an edge? Well, if the universe is infinite, then there isn't an edge. There's no boundary or limit to the cosmos. It's like trying to find the end of a circle or the edge of a sphere. It simply doesn't exist. But as human beings, we're wired to seek boundaries, to find edges. We look for beginnings and endings, for starts and finishes. We're comfortable with limits, with the familiar confines of our earthly existence. The concept of infinity is, quite frankly, a bit mind-boggling. So, to imagine an edge to this vast cosmos might be a bit of a challenge, don't you think? To grasp this concept, we need to familiarize ourselves with the theory of space-time. Imagine space as a vast, two-dimensional surface, like a trampoline. Now picture a bowling ball resting at the center. The ball creates a depression, a curve in the fabric of the trampoline. This is akin to how massive objects, like planets and stars, bend the fabric of space-time. The bigger the object, the deeper the curve, the stronger the gravity. This is how gravity works, according to Einstein's theory of general relativity. But space isn't just two-dimensional, it's a four-dimensional fabric, three dimensions of space and one of time, all woven together. So when we talk about the universe's edge, we're not talking about a physical boundary you might bump into, like the edge of a table. Instead, we're talking about the limits of what we can observe the furthest reaches of space-time that light has had the chance to travel since the universe's birth. You see, light, though fast, isn't infinite. It takes time to travel. The universe is around 13.8 billion years old, so we can only see as far as light has traveled in that time. Beyond that, it's not that there's nothing there, it's just that the light from those regions hasn't reached us yet. Therefore, when we gaze into the cosmos, we're not just looking across space, but also back in time. The farther we look, the older the light, the closer to the universe's birth we see. This is why we say the universe doesn't have an edge, but a beginning. We're not looking towards a boundary, but towards a time before which we cannot see. A time of cosmic dawn, the Big Bang. So, in a way, the edge of the universe is not a place, but a time. A moment 13.8 billion years ago. Thus, in the canvas of space-time, the universe doesn't have an edge, but a beginning. Now let's travel back in time to the very start of our universe. Picture yourself as a cosmic archaeologist, sifting through the sands of space-time for clues about the origins of everything. Among your most precious discoveries is a relic known as the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. This isn't an ordinary artifact. This is the oldest light we can see, a snapshot of the universe when it was just a baby, merely 380,000 years after the Big Bang. When the universe was born, about 13.8 billion years ago, it was a hot, dense soup of particles. As it expanded and cooled, atoms began to form, and light was able to travel freely for the first time. This light, this ancient glow, is the CMB we see today. The CMB is a cosmic baby photo capturing the universe at a time when it was smooth and uniform with tiny fluctuations that would later grow into galaxies and clusters of galaxies. It's like a whisper from the dawn of time telling us about the universe's earliest moments and its grand evolution. But there's something even more fascinating about the CMB. 
It's not just a window into the cosmic past, it's also a boundary. The CMB is the most distant thing we can observe in the universe, the farthest we can see back in time. Beyond it lies an era we cannot directly observe, an era of the universe's infancy known as the Recombination Epoch. The CMB then is a kind of cosmic horizon, a boundary to our vision. But it's important to understand that this is not an edge in the traditional sense. The universe doesn't end there. It's just that our current technology and understanding limit us to observing only up to this point. The CMB acts as a sort of edge to our observable universe, but not to the universe as a whole. We're still peering into the cosmic depths, still unravelling the mysteries of the cosmos. And who knows what astonishing discoveries await us beyond that cosmic horizon. So what exists beyond this observable universe? The answer may lie in one of the most intriguing and profound theories in cosmology, the multiverse theory. This hypothesis proposes that our universe, the cosmos we call home, may be just one of many, potentially infinite, universes. Imagine blowing bubbles into a glass of milk. Each bubble represents a universe, including ours. These universes, or bubbles, may have different physical laws, different dimensions, and even different forms of matter. They could be teeming with life, or desolate and empty. Some might be just beginning, while others are in their death throes. This cosmic foam of universes is born out of the theory of eternal inflation, an extension of the Big Bang theory. The Big Bang theory posits that our universe started from a singularity, an infinitely small and dense point, and has been expanding ever since. Eternal inflation takes this a step further, suggesting that there could be regions of space still inflating, birthing new universes in a never-ending process. However, these other universes, if they exist, are not directly observable. They are beyond our cosmic horizon, the boundary beyond which we cannot see, due to the finite speed of light and the age of our universe. They are, in essence, beyond the observable universe. The idea of multiple universes is, of course, speculative. It's based on our current understanding of physics and cosmology, which is continually evolving. But it's a tantalizing thought, isn't it, that we might be just one small part of an infinite cosmic landscape, each universe with its unique story to tell. So the next time you gaze up at the night sky, remember, you're not just looking at stars and galaxies, you're looking at our universe, a single bubble in an infinite cosmic foam. And who knows? The edge of our universe might not be an edge at all. In this context, the edge of our universe might simply be the start of another universe. But what does the future hold for our universe? The answer is as intriguing as it is elusive. There are several theories that attempt to predict the destiny of our universe, each as mind-boggling as the next. Let's take a brief journey through the cosmos and explore some of these fascinating possibilities. One theory is the Big Freeze, also known as the Heat Death. This theory suggests that as the universe continues to expand, it will eventually reach a state of maximum entropy. Stars will burn out, galaxies will drift apart, and all matter will decay, leaving behind a cold, dark universe. In this scenario, the universe doesn't end with a bang, but with an icy whimper. Next, we have the Big Rip Theory. This concept is based on the idea that the universe is not only expanding, but that this expansion is accelerating. If this acceleration continues unchecked, it could eventually tear apart everything in the universe, from galaxies and stars, right down to atoms themselves. A rather dramatic end, wouldn't you say? And then there's the Big Crunch. This theory posits that the expansion of the universe could one day reverse, causing everything to contract. Galaxies, stars, even space-time itself could be compressed back into a singular point, similar to the state of the universe before the Big Bang. This could potentially lead to another Big Bang, giving birth to a new universe. These theories, while varied, are all based on our current understanding of the universe's expansion rate. They paint a picture of a universe that is constantly evolving, where the edge is as fluid and dynamic as the cosmos itself. In the grand scheme of things, our understanding of the universe is still in its infancy. As we continue to explore and learn, who knows what other theories we might uncover. So, the edge of the universe might also be its end, or rather a new beginning.